not really for. I spoke about it before um, the whole Tremaine Emery and Supreme thing and how funny that whole thing was as it played out. Essentially, Tremaine try to you know use race as a trojan horse to um say his piece and to kind of speak about how ill he was maybe treated as supreme because of the systemic racism there he accused them of um which kind of essentially boiled down to him not being unable to kind of get these ideas out specific ideas concerning an artist called arthur jaffa and his depiction of black people and slavery imagery and all this malarkey which supreme obviously wasn't comfortable with and you know for whatever reason tremaine felt disrespected when they didn't want to go through with his idea turned it into a big race baiting sort of thing and essentially played the race card and got a lot of sympathy out there but also got a lot of people like myself questioning why that was the way he wanted to do go about doing things and whether or not there could have been another way to co he could have done it that could have maybe had better results but it's transpired the way it has he stepped down for supreme he's continuing on with his job over at denim tears and doing whatever he was doing prior to actually send a statement to vogue business to talk about why exactly he left in his own words so all the stuff that i was talking about all my hypotheses um and whatnot could kind of be put to rest because he actually did speak quite clearly about why he decided to resign and i'm going to read it to you now courtesy of vogue business i never did supreme for the money he was speaking as news broke his resignation as supreme's first ever career director for 18 months in a row i'm just about the radical truth because when you tell the truth there's nothing to worry about that's pretty true i'm i'm okay with that also i'm i'm kind of a a radical honesty type of dude as well um but i do think in the corporate environment there is a element of just dancing around the truth or bending the truth whatever it may be in order for you to kind of you know do your job um radical honesty unless you fucking run the comp unless you fucking run the company just doesn't work and at the end of the day if you're an employee which is why as he ordered eggs at his regular tribeca breakfast spot emery prepared to serve his take on precisely what ended his time at the streetwear brand that news was first reported on wednesday by complex citing a number of sources supreme confirmed the exit to business of fashion on the thursday in a letter to colleagues shared by emery with very business he wrote a letter to the colleagues what like an exit letter or something weird um he stated that his resignation was over supreme found that james jeb is a, a failure to communicate the decision to cancel a collaboration with the artist um arthur jaffa for four months which made emery believe that systemic racism was a play within the structure of supreme it's an interesting way to kind of interpret information right if the founder of supreme is finding it difficult to kind of tell you why they decided to cancel a collaboration my first thing wouldn't be it's the same racism i'd want to find out why this founder seems to be incapable of talking to me like why are they worried why are they scared um what can we how can we kind of clear this up in order to kind of make it cool like you know what i mean my first thing will be let me if i feel like someone's not communicating well with me i'm going to go and try and communicate with them to establish some communication so we can actually talk um and get through the issue i'm not going to immediately label them a racist or a ras or label the situation racismo but maybe there was other sort of like micro things that happen that we don't know about. But so far, everything he's talking about, it just makes him look kind of bad, to be fair. And again, let just think about the optics of like someone like, you know, Denim Tears, someone like Tremaine, who's only had his brand operational for four something years, who before that has been doing a lot of consultory, cons consultancy work, kind of coming in as a cool guy and adding his little cool guy sprinkle here and there. Imagine him sitting opposite James Jebby and telling him how to run his business. Do you know how like, do you know the level of kind of gumption you have to have, the neck you have to have to tell someone like Joe Jebbia how to run his fucking business? And the reason why I say this is because if you know anything about Supreme and you know anything about the skateboard industry, you'll know the skateboard industry is incredibly, incredible click, incredibly clicky. Um, it's one of the last remaining um, subcultures and they're incredibly, incredibly, um, you know, suspicious of people coming in. Um, who are trying to basically make a buck out of skateboarding they don't like it especially if you don't skate and from what i know james jebbia doesn't skate has no history of skating unless he's you know you kind of associate with some of his friends who used to run hideout and stuff they might have some loose association with skateboarding and stuff but they're just old white dudes but he's just a, a dude who kind of liked skateboarding from afar liked the aesthetic and thought the skateboarders deserved better quality products so he sets up supreme and then he somehow is able to set up a brand that was just there to service skateboarders from a non-skateboarder, but have it ripped by some of the most legit people in the industry and the scene when it first kind of launched in fucking, you know, in fucking um, New York in the 90s and shit, especially outside of the union and fucking into his own stores. So the fact that he was able to do that in such a clicky, well-guarded, 
um, super skeptical industry as skateboarding shows you that he kind of you know knows what he's doing and obviously to survive this long what is it 30 plus years maybe it's less than that um i think no they celebrate 25th anniversary soon. so it's around 30 year mark maybe so he's still been in the operation to lecture him on how to do his business i actually go about doing his collaboration that's fucking hilarious to me Prima and a parent company vf corp did not respond to vogue's business requests or comment which is smart because just let it die it's kind of already died i'm probably the only people i'm probably the only person online still speaking about this i'm sure people are still speaking about behind the scenes and stuff i don't really know anyone behind the scenes so i just can't do this in my own little vortex my mom's basement but i'm sure outside of me speaking about this is probably not a lot of people still talking about it. so just let it die don't comment and kind of let it be if people think you're racist it's cool but most likely there's tons of people sending in their emails or applications through fucking linkedin and friends and stuff to get a job there i'm sure of it in a statement of the business of fashion, Supreme refuted his claims. They said, We strongly disagree with Tremaine's characterization of the company and the handling of the Arthur Jaffa project, which has not been cancelled. We are disappointed it did not work out with Tremaine and we wish him the best of luck going forward. So basically, thank you, but fuck off. It continues. From Tribeca, Emery is keen to um, disembag is keen to dis disambiguate. Right? Is that the same word? Tro yeah, di disambiguate. He says that before suffering an atoric aneurysm, Jesus Christ, an erotic aneurysm. What is an erotic aneurysm specifically? I saw him talk about it in an interview. What is it in spe what is specifically this? Aortic aneurysm. Oh my God, Jesus. An aortic aneurysm is an uh, aneurysm balloon shaped bulge in the aorta, the large artery that carries blood from the heart through to the chest and torso. The aortic aneurysm can dissect or rupture. The force of blood pumping can split the layers of the artery wall, allowing blood to leak in between them. So that's why he said he nearly died. Jesus Christ, bro. This is a serious thing. Imagine getting this not soon after one of your best friends, Virgil Abloh, passes away. And then you get this just after you get the job. What job is confirmed from Supreme? Maybe if he's a woo-woo type, which I think he probably is, he probably thought this job was cursed from the beginning. I bet you. I bet he's used a part of Tremaine. You probably thought this job was cursed from the moment he got it because of the circumstances around the job. Your friend passes away. He's he's, he's unable to... Because I don't think Tremaine got the job when Super Virgil was around. He didn't even... Maybe Virgil was aware that he was applying for it because I'm sure the application process for those type of jobs is super long. They make you jump through hoops and do, you know, tasks and they probably ask people for their recommendations about you, blah, 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 blah. But his best friend wasn't able to even see him get this job pass away and then all this stuff happens to him bloody hell man fucking crazy anyway it continues um last october that left him unable to work as he recovered until april this year he began to prepare a collaboration with jaffa emery himself jaffa em, like emery himself J jaffa is an artist and a writer whose output lays bare the traumatic legacy of african-american experience in order to ensure it is never forgotten supreme has long used a provocative imagery to promote its radical image and emery planned to harness that heritage to jaffa's imagery in order to as he puts it paint the black experience on clothing and also as an artist i think the best challenge for taking this role is the fact that he's got two different mediums he can kind of apply his ideas on or put his ideas on right he's got his own brand denim tears where he can kind of do his own thing and kind of go right be radical and talk about whatever you know racy topics or controversial topics or whatever you can do what he wants on his brand because it's his but he's got a commercial side of his operation or of his output with supreme where it's a different sort of design proposition it's a, it's a different design challenge and it's a, it's a different design brief I think that was what that was what would make my dick hard every day. The fact that I would have the opportunity to do what I want on my own brand, but then I work with certain constraints when it comes to Supreme. I wouldn't want to just take what I already do at Denim Tears and try and do it at Supreme. That's boring. I think the design challenge should be to try to do it differently. Um, that's what I think some of the greatest designers do. That ability to kind of do those things differently, split your brain. And oddly enough, I think if he was able to do that, most likely the, the product that he does for Denim Tears would have improved also they would have both kind of benefited from the struggle of having to think of ideas through the lens of Supreme without kind of, you know, um, going and resting on the stuff that you already did with your own brand. 
but he was so hell bent on no i'm gonna tell this black experience thing because black experience is my identity it's all i know i'm gonna use this trauma fucking stuff to sell t-shirts and hoodies which is fucking bizarre really to my personal opinion i would have much preferred that he just approached it that's what i thought he's gonna do i thought he's gonna come in and say hey i'm a super creative I've got loads of creative ideas. Some of them don't actually work on Denim Tears because Denim Tears is a particular thing. If it's in a fucking name, right? It's even even the byline. I think it's at the Black Diaspora or something like that, right? Um, uh, it says that I think it was on the label. So that's one thing. So maybe your more commercial ideas that you couldn't maybe let run or that couldn't bang under Denim Tears, you do it with Supreme. That's what I would have done. So I'm surprised he was approaching it from like, oh, Supreme is just my another canvas for me to do more Denim Tears work on. That's where I think he kind of lost it. Continues. Emery worked with Jeffa to paint the experience unflinchingly. Three of the photographs chosen by the creative director and artist depicting the lynching of a black person, the scars of the flogging of a former slave known as St. Gordon and the image of a black man who had bleached his skin from the waist down with the exception of his penis. Jesus Christos. Um, let's see this. Um, uh, Supreme was never going to approve this sort of stuff, especially when you've seen the sort of stuff that Supreme usually um, cancels and, you know, changes their minds on because maybe this the subject matter is too racy and stuff. But a T-shirt depicting a black person with, you know, whip scars and stuff, lynching scars or whatever it may be on their back was never going to go and never going to bang in any way, in any discernible way. And, you know, I like Arthur Jaffa. He's got some cool shit out there and stuff. Got some cool ideas. Seems like a level-headed dude. Interesting way that he approaches art. Um, but let's be honest too. Is he of the level of celebrity needed to have a collaboration with Supreme? The fact that they collaborate with some of the most well-known artists in the in the contemporary art world is Arthur Jaffa really the next one up that would be deserving or that would be knowing no no not deserving that would be known well enough to justify his collaboration with Supreme because Supreme collaborations are essentially a way for like kids to buy artworks right that will maybe appreciate and value and shit selling out all this malarkey will a Arthur Jaffa skateboard deck really bang the same way a Damien Hirst one would probably not so and there's plenty of other artists within the Damien Hirst sort of like world or level that they could collaborate with instead of going for an Arthur Jaffa do you know what I mean he's not even that well known to for that to happen that would be a bit of a weird one they kind of did it in the first place so I'm I'm, I'm surprised that you know he thought that would be a way to go about doing things it, but again this is a weird thing like this would be a perfect collaboration when it comes to his own brand Dead in Tears when you think about the work he's done previously um when you think about his you know his love of David Hammond's you know um like everything he kind of speaks about you know Tremaine when he's in interviews and shit I think the Arthur Jaffa stuff would have worked where, better on, on his own stuff than it would have with Supreme anyway. That message would have been told far better. He could have done installation video pieces, artworks, you know, if he wanted to have a fucking coffin, you know, in his store or something with the fucking t-shirts splayed all over him, that could have worked. And whatever he wanted to do, have a rope in the middle of the store, that would have banged more with his own brand than with Supreme. It just wouldn't have sat right, really, to be honest. But, you know, what do I know? If these images sound conf um, conf um, confronting, sorry, that's because they were designed to be. As Emery says, Supreme, they want to say it's a skate brand, but it's based off black culture. Okay, that's you interpreting what you think it is. Um, imagine telling somebody what their brand is. No, no, no. You say it's about skateboard culture. I say it's about black people. What, because black people invented skateboarding? So that's what you wanted to say. Like, black skateboarding is probably the, the only... I'd say multicultural, um, you know, sub like, it's a way of life, sport, whatever that was created. I don't think it's it's only a white thing. I don't think it's only a black thing. It's just a, you know, it's it's a dis disenfranchised, rebellious youth thing. It's a way of it's an expression. It's a way of life. But I don't think it kind of belongs to any particular race, personally. Again, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that's to, that's that's the truth. Maybe when I was skating growing up, yes, there were people that would call me white boy, but that's just like pure it just more of an ignorant thing because not, there's not a lot of people in my area that skated and the people that did they did see who skate were a particular shade cool but i don't know this idea that it's based off black culture what does that even mean because they use hip-hop imagery like the music that everybody sort of listens to around the world just because you use imagery of hip-hop does that mean you are essentially a black a black brand i don't know we put out a prodigy t-shirt that shows a black man in jail that says hnic that stands for head nigger in charge but we can't put out alpha jaffa club yeah come on you can't compare a prodigy t-shirt to alpha jaffa please this guy's being a bit dense but again comparing fucking this supreme tea with the stuff that alpha jaffa does is just insane to be fair but hey Emery says that in August, four months after he returned to work, um, he discovered that those Arthur Jaffa images had been pulled during a time away on medical leave. 
that's the gross bit that's the thing that supreme should owe him an apology on and maybe that's why supreme did go to his house sorry james jebbia went to his house and you know had a kind of clear the air conversation because that's the grimy thing the guy was in hospital suffering from a aortic aneurysm who knows who who visited him from supreme probably not a lot of people that might again maybe it was a bad omen in general you get the job you get really ill you nearly die which i guess will for some people it does laser in your it kind of makes your focus lasered you, you kind of laser in on you whatever that fucking term is so you basically decide hey i'm gonna only worry about the things that actually fucking care about and not waste time on stuff i don't or stuff that brings me stress because i know you know life can be fleeting and you know then supreme people don't come and visit you in hospital then you find out through the grapevine that the project you're working on and looking forward to doing has now been pulled and no one spoke to you. I can understand why he was annoyed. That I get completely. Your, your authority has been undermined. You don't feel like you're being respected and shit. But again, I don't think I would have ran to the racism thing. I would have been more annoyed as a professional. I would be a more annoyed ego in terms of as a man and pride and shit. But I wouldn't take it as, oh, that, that means they don't want to see black people win because you've got the job a brand with like what 60 people working in the head office and one guy deciding hey let's give this guy a chance to be a creative director that isn't a systemically racist thing that's actually quite you know once a progressive that's that's pretty ballsy and courageous of them to give somebody that's only got four years experience of you know making and having their own brand and shit um you know to run one of the biggest brands out there one of the most story brand one of the most legendary brand the best probably shooter brand out there that's a big risk on their part so the fact that they did it i think really refused the whole systemically racist thing but again maybe i'm wrong supreme's decision to cancel the collaboration without involving emery led to him to resign some three weeks ago the quote my issue isn't the whether it got cancelled or not yes it is you, you're 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 pissed off about that as well just be honest it is it is that they didn't talk to me about it for four months that's fair i'm the creative director and they were talking about it in the c-suite which i'm a part of behind my back that's systemic racism because they're scared to, <laughs> no it doesn't work that way if someone's scared to talk to you about something maybe it's because they don't have good communicate like i could believe because i've got a lot of friends who have what not let's take that back I know a lot of people who have worked for Supreme in one way or the other. I wouldn't call them friends. I don't really speak to them and shit. They don't really know my mum's name and shit. I don't really know what they fucking look like nowadays and stuff. We haven't crossed paths in years. But I know a lot of people who have worked for them. And it wouldn't surprise me. And a lot of these people that I know who work for them are the type of people who kind of get caught. Like they're good at networking. They're good at smooching. They're good at just being around the scene. You know, they never left. Like I always say before, like part of the reason why I think I'm kind of in a plight that I am now is because I just left and bounced. I was in the scene for a while. I was heavy in it. I was doing some quote unquote cool things. I was somewhat well regarded. And then the coming point where I just fed up, maybe I didn't want to play the game anymore. Maybe I was too lazy. I don't know. But I just decided to just bail and I left. You know, I got a house that is way outside of the core cool parts of London and just kind of did my own thing. But a lot of people didn't leave. They just stayed. So the guys and girls who were taking club club pictures went on to become legit photographers and shit that were DJing at little parties and shit, went on to work for boiler rooms and have proper DJ careers. People that were doing like, you know, little bits of fucking vintage buying and selling on depop went on to open their own stores and become legit stylists like people just people figured it out when you hang around long enough and you be, you're persistent and you show up people will probably figure it out for you but they didn't figure it out for me so that happened to those people but i know those people did that to get their jobs at supreme because that's the only way you could get it before vf corp the only way you could get a job for supreme was if people knew you now maybe they have might have jobs listed on linkedin i'm not too sure how it works but before it was only like a friends or friends recommendation with that being said, it wouldn't surprise me if someone told me the internal communication process at Supreme was a bit shitty because it's always been like a friend of a friend thing. It's kind of clicky, kind of weird. Um, so maybe things kind of get, things don't get said the way they would in normal companies because it's not really run like a normal company. It's sort of run a little bit like, you know, like it's run out of a little studio, but it's obviously a multi-billion dollar fucking brand and shit. So that I can believe for sure. But again, I'd want I'd want look I'd want clear the air conversation before I go and call you systemically racist. Personally. He continues. He recalls a conversation with Jebia following his resignation. The reason he didn't tell me about it is because he didn't want me to convince him to do the collaboration. Huh? So he didn't want to speak to him because he thinks Tremaine is some sort of fucking 
um, what you call it? He has some sort of fucking magician powers. He has the ability to fucking hypnotize people, and he could have convinced him to put um a depiction of black people as slaves and shit, or slavery, slave imagery on a fucking Supreme T-shirt and sell it. Hmm. Press X for doubt. And I said to James, maybe the reason why black people, black men keep getting lynched is some. Oh my god, I want to read this phrase. And I said to James. Maybe the reason why black men keep getting lynched in some form or fashion is because we don't show the kids what happened. What? So Tremaine thinks that we have a lack of imagery, accounts, movies, TV series and documentaries that talk about the plight of racism and the effect on African-Americans or black people overall. And that Supreme should serve as the vessel to educate these kids on race issues. That's what he thinks. That's, that's Supreme's objective. That's Supreme's purpose. They should be a vessel to educate the kids on race issues. And how you do that is by reminding them slavery is bad. They don't know that. Schools don't teach them that. There's not plenty of documentaries and movies out there for them to check themselves. None. Not personal direct accounts on people's family who directly were affected by racism zero not conversations in the news no or in the classroom or with professors it has to be done through supreme the hubris on this guy is pretty crazy because essentially he's saying my vision or my plight or my personal crusade is the most important thing this is kind of him speaking for himself it's less about black people and it's him just using the whole black card thing as a trojan horse to sort of like you know um uh, push forward his own agenda which again is very bizarre and very very surprising because he always gave me the impression that he was a lot smarter than this he kind of just sounds like the regular person on the online who kind of screams racism whenever something doesn't go their way and i'm not even talking about liberal left it's just people that just say this sort of stuff just put it out there because it's the easiest way to kind of deal um with pushback or to deal with how hard life is to kind of navigate and to sort of you know um absolve yourself of any blame absolve yourself of any introspection of any personal um you know accountability of any personal inventory let's just put it on the racism thing maybe the reason black men keep getting lynched in some form is because we don't show the kids what happened so essentially if george floyd would have seen a supreme t-shirt with alpha jeff artwork maybe it wouldn't have happened or the officers that murdered george floyd if they would have seen a, a particular box logo a particular photo tee that wouldn't have happened they needed supreme to tell them that that was wrong what they did this guy's fucking wild bro and the look at me and he and and he looks at me and goes you're right i was wrong of course a, a white person's never going to hear you say this and then push back because it sounds crazy if they push back right if they try and push back and argue against you saying black men keep getting lynched on form because we don't show them what kids what happened you no one's gonna have it it's the same way how people get crazy nervous when people push back a little bit at you know maybe the over victimization of jewish people right it's the same situation some people get a bit queasy when you talk about that sort of stuff so no one's gonna with good conscience try and question <laughs> the amount of people that died of the holocaust unless you're fucking yay and you're nuts right you're not gonna sit there and question all of that sort of stuff or maybe you know fucking push forward these crazy conspiracy theories of some fucking um, jewish cabal that's kind of at the head of all the woes of you in life and whatnot but this is the same thing this is this is of this is at the same level of all that nutty shit that Kanye was saying it honestly is the same thing which is ironic because i'm sure tremaine doesn't probably like whatever version of yay we have at the moment but he actually sounds like him it continues here said supreme told business of fashion that jeffrey collaboration was not being cancelled and was merely unreleased <laughs> i love that wording it's cancelled supreme also let's stop lying in it you shelved it for a reason it's not coming out Emery says that this is a reversal uh, prompted by his insistence that the article cite systemic racism when announcing his departure and that only after acknowledging the forthcoming article the Supreme moved to contact Arthur Jaffe in order to go ahead with the collaboration and the use of his images. Okay, so they wanted to, they didn't want to be, no, yeah, that makes sense. They're trying to protect their back in that sense. But again, this makes more sense of being annoyed about their, how they're moving as a corporation. But again, I wouldn't go straight to the racism thing. Maybe they move a bit funny style. Again, you know, I'm sure other things happen. Like I said previously, maybe no one visits him in hospital. Maybe nobody communicated to him anything about the collaboration. Even though he kept asking, he probably kept getting ghosted on certain things. Then you come back and you hear through 
I don't know, uh, let's say a store assistant. Right, he walks into the New York store and some sales assistant tells him, Oh yeah, shit, sorry about the fucking Arthur Jeffrey collaboration. He's like, What? Imagine hearing it from some sales assistant's guy and it's like, Oh shit, that that's gonna that's not gonna it's not gonna sit well with you. I get that. Combining Supreme's heritage with Emery's authors authorship seemed on paper as an astute way of meeting the challenge. Through his 2019 founded brand in Tears, Emery has emerged as such a compelling and important voice in the US fashion space. Three of his designs were featured in the 2021 exhibition America Lexicon of Fashion at the Metropolitan Designs, sorry, Metropolitan Museum's Anna Wintour's uh, Costume Center, a canonical, a canonical achievement of which Emery justly proud. Um, Born in Atlanta, yeah, that, to be fair, I still think it was a good appointment. The the idea behind it was sound. Tremaine's always been a relative cool guy. Um, when I kind of met him first in London when I was working in 1948, he was associated with a lot of kind of cool people in the industry who he still basically is friends with now to this day. Um, one of them being A-Side, the guy that basically introduced me to Nike and got me a job at 1948. And then our relationship unfortunately turned sour because, you know, he's a very hard person to like. Um, if you know who A-Side is, he's a very, unless you are someone that's clouted up as well, it's very difficult to be his friend. He's kind of a bit of a prick, which is not his fault. It's just the way he is. But, you know, um, he was also, I have to kind of give him props because he was a person that basically got me into the scene for the longest time I was on the fringes I had my little blog called Stop Begging I used to kind of write on and moan and whinge about certain things in the industry but I think I was way too combative and just you know when you're a kid and you're young you think you know everything I think when I was like 19 I probably felt like I could run fucking supreme I could be the head of energy marketing at Nike like I had that kind of level of confidence I think I actually maybe said it even to Ace at one time like I, I just want that job you know what I mean when you when you leave I should get that why can't I get that sort of thing with no experience on anything right I had this maximum belief that I could do these things because I had such an immense deep knowledge of fucking you know nike trainers you know what i mean even though the job is more than that i felt i could be the nike energy influencing marketing guy because i knew about fucking retro air maxes and shit or vintage og like whatever nonsense ideas and obviously delusion of grandeur but that was how i was but obviously that guy was kind of hard to get on with um the airside guy but in their relationship i always found it weird because like how come his Tremaine's really safe but then he's super cool with this guy who's a proper cunt and i'm sure he's got friends of his on his side who don't like him but like him, like but don't like asa but like him i didn't understand it but obviously when you get older you understand you know maturity of being able to be friends with people even though your other friends don't like them you might have a different relationship with them so that is obviously something you think about but he's always been a cool guy always been a safe guy it's no surprise that they would get him for this role because since then he went on to be very kind of influential in culture doing things behind the scenes for obviously frank ocean and Stu scene with other cool stuff working with yay on yeezy and stuff and then obviously launching his brand in tears and it just not being a t-shirt brand actually doing cut and sew actually doing denim so i think supreme going for tremaine was a smart choice was a very forward thinking choice it made a lot of sense he's got a big network as well that he could easily kind of they could easily tap into um he already is a familiar with who they are as people and shit because he's got knowledge of working with these guys and being familiar with them or being in the scene and being a bit older is the maturity levels there everything was kind of there but it just didn't work out fine but i don't think the selection was an error i think it was sound and again it goes to show that the reason why supreme's at the top of the game because they're willing to take these sort of chances he's not he was never a part of the original supreme team he was always kind of known to the people there but he's essentially an external hire for one of their first real important forward-facing roles and they hire somebody externally that's a big deal it's just a shame it didn't work out unfortunately but i hope this doesn't sully their opinion of it and they try with somebody else um the rumors are at the moment they're already trying with the cactus plant flea market team or person and that is currently the person that's kind of you know filling in the shoes at the moment i could be wrong but i hope they do that going forward I and mean, maybe keep seeing that and maybe rotating it after a period of years so that you have a fresh um approach to your brand and shit um, because as, as formulaic or no, as probably repetitive as some of the shapes and the silhouettes are it would be cool to have different people interpret their vision of supreme differently it's because cactus plant flea market is a particular type of aesthetic then you have somebody else come in and do it i think that'd be cool as well but you know what do i know 
Born in Atlanta and raised in Jamaica, Queens, New York, Emery is a creative artist whose output is defined by the commitment of social justice and his experience as a black man. As he told GQ last July, when he was selling out in retail, he would end his day by hanging out at Union NYC, the seminal streetwear store co-founded by Jebbia and Marianne Fosco. Um, before taking a job with Mark Jacobs in 2006, um, he had been due to interview with Jebbia for the role at the store. Okay, cool. That probably is around the time that I also was starting at fucking work at 1948 and being in the street too. So probably that's why it kind of co that's probably why i probably bumped into it because i'm sure he was he I, th I think mark jacobs brought him to here in the uk if i'm not mistaken so maybe that's why um that role with jacobs allowed him to move to london four years later after the murder of his friend raheem garys um compelled him to leave new york in london he connected with a side um also known as ty from AFTV, <laughs> and together they founded the party throwing and creative consulting partnership no vacancy in emery worked with frank ocean yay and stussy and the brand not the man uh before being inspired in 2019 to fund his own clothing brand as gq in the profile the inspiration was fired by supreme as he told in gq that profile the inspiration was fired was by Supreme. Oh, what um the name denim tears applies to cotton slavery and the glory and the plight of african diaspora diaspora um uh, my father's first job was a picking cotton as a kid once i was in supreme store in london they did the martin luther king hoodies and the hoodies were on sale i just thought this is a problem these should be sold out then i thought what if i can make a brand that kids line up to buy and wear clothes that are about the plight of the glory of the african-american experience that would be something worth doing yeah of course but the funny thing about it as great as the imagery is to see these kids queuing outside of his pop-up stores or whatever to buy these jeans and hoodies and shit you get the feeling they're just doing it because it's the cool thing to wear. I don't think they give a fuck about the plight of the African of African Americans. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure they're aware of it, but <clears throat> it's not like they're wearing it because of that. Which I'm sure I wonder how he feels about that. The majority again, I'd say the majority of kids wearing them, especially now you can get fucking denim tier stuff from fucking Taobao and AliExpress and shit. Those kids over there aren't obviously giving a shit about the plight of African Americans. They just want to wear cool shit. The same way how, you know, there was a period in time where Asian people loved to have clothing that had like swear words on it. That probably didn't make sense because it kind of made them feel a bit like, you know, badass. I'm sure the same thing happens with the clothing. So I wonder how that makes him feel. You have a clothing brand that you want to, you know, to be a social justice machine or platform. And then it's also now being co-opted as just a cool piece of clothing. I guess you have to kind of accept the, the pros and the cons. <clears throat> Last bit. Speaking today, at the end of his 18 months in Supreme, Emery said that his immediate plan is to travel to Paris with his fiancée, Andy, and regroup. Oh, he's, he's, um, he's got a fiancé. Hmm. You know, it'd be funny if after all of this um, systemic racism shit, his wife or his wife-to-be was incredibly white. That would be hilarious, isn't it? That would be like the kind of the meme they do online of those um super um rah rah social justice warrior people who are like white man bad, but then they post a picture of their boyfriends and it's always the whitest of dudes. It's like AOC, that type of thing, right? AOC is all about race, you know, social justice, race issues and shit. And she goes out with, you know, the whitest guy you can ever see. He's so white, he's fucking ginger. And um again, no 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 slight on the gingers out there, big up my redheads, but it's just hilarious. But again, let no point to Google and shit. Let them live. But that's cool. He's going to regroup. Um, he says, the quote, I never did Supreme for money. You know, the week outside the Supreme, we dropped 5,000 pairs of denim tears, of denim on denim tears. It sold out in seven minutes. And then we took in 1.7 million. Oof. My annual salary at Supreme. Oh, I love that he says this stuff out loud. This is the stuff I love about Tremaine. He's very candid in his approach. So to be the creative director of Supreme, you make 600,000 a year. Is that good? Let's let's see. Um, average salary for creative director. Let's do creative director of a, like a fashion brand. Cause I'm sure it's different. Of oh, fashion brand. Let's see what people say here. Okay, average salary of a fashion brand, or let's of, of in London, according to Glassdoor, is ninety eight thousand a year. So he was getting paid way above the average in the UK, <laughs> to be honest. Even if you convert that, 600, 600 USD is probably, what, 500 pounds, 500,000, maybe 400. So you still get paid above the average here from the UK anyway. But again, we're not, you know, another one, fashion creator director said luxury fashion has anywhere. So um, luxury fashion is anywhere between 400,000 to 1 million. So you got paid somewhere within the middle of that malarkey. But Jesus Christ, it's a pretty decent salary. Um, again, I still think being able to have a, a consistent paycheck 
that you get just from doing t-shirts and hoodies which is not too hard of a job and you're already plugged into a an infrastructure where they've got everything working in for you you're just a plug and play guy i did him tears i'm sure he's doing everything because you know it's your own brand you want to do everything but at supreme you can just kind of come in like the superstar fucking creative director work and kind of go home maybe it's a bit stressful because it might be a nine to five technically it might require him to be in the office a lot who knows or maybe i think because he moved back to new york because of it if i'm not mistaken because he's in la for a period so that might be the annoying part of it, especially if you don't want to live in new york but I think being able to have your own brand where you can, you know, drop 5,000 pairs of jeans and make 1.7 million and also have the ability to make 600 grand a year, that just gives you more money to kind of play with, to kind of feed back into your brand. I would assume, again, as a creative, as an artist myself, that's what I would have done. I would just take in the salary. It's like working, it's like having a residency at fucking Pasha or some shit or in some Vegas club. You would take the salary of doing that residency to kind of feed back into your artistry. Maybe you'd use the money to kind of buy more music equipment, Maybe you use the money to kind of fund the marketing push for an artist you've got on your label. Maybe you'd do it to throw an interesting party, immersive AI, VR stuff like what Dixon was doing and shit. Like all those sort of things you'd kind of explore because why not? You've got the benefit of this kind of free money to kind of play with essentially. And when it's just, it's not just all your one salary, it kind of adds to it. I mean, and diversifying your income isn't a bad thing. So I still think that was a bit of a faux pas. And again, the opportunity forget all that shit personal you could do the opportunity to bring new people in would be worth its weight you know i mean it would be worth more than any money people are going to give to you if you say the place is only i think you mentioned in one article 10 percent um you know um non-white people that work there and you're disappointed to see that because the, obviously the stores are so fucking you know um diverse um with terms of people that work there and shit but maybe behind the scenes it's not so much which is a problem fair enough but you could easily address it by just hiring your li- your own little team, and I'm sure you could have, you could have done that. I'm sure part of the remit of a creative director is that you can hire your own people. Maybe not five, maybe three, but still three extra people that come from a different part of the world that have different part of ex- different experiences that can maybe help and push Supreme in a new direction, or maybe you know just whatever contribute to what they're already doing. That would have been sick to see.